Good evening. And welcome to many things, to our Thursday night service, to the festival of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ and our end of the year festivities with the graduation of our eighth grade class. It's a pleasure to have you here in God's house as we hear his truth that gives joy to our lives tonight and every day. We'll use the order of service. Everything's printed out in your service folder. And so we begin with the opening hymn. Please note that grades five, six, and seven will stand, uh, will sing the opening stanza. The congregation's invited to join in stanzas two, three, and four. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature 
and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, King of glory, on this day you ascended far above the heavens, and at God's right hand you rule the nations. Leave us not alone, we pray, but grant us the spirit of truth that at your command and by your power we may be your witnesses in all the world, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus ascends to rule over all things as his church serves as his witnesses. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. These are the words of St. Luke. I wrote my first book, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began doing and teaching until the day he was taken up after he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After he had suffered, he presented himself alive to the apostles with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and told them things about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father promised, which you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they were together with him, they asked, Lord, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After he said these things, he was taken up while they were watching, and a cloud took him out of their sight. They were looking intently into the sky as he went away. Suddenly, two men in white clothes stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The children sing Psalm 47.
St. John sees the ascended Lord as a warrior riding on a white horse fighting against all those who oppose Christ's gospel and his church. The Revelation to St. John chapter 19. I saw heaven standing open. And there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True. And he judges and makes war in righteousness. His eyes are like blazing flames, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him, which no one knows except he himself. He is also clothed in a garment that has been dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies in heaven, which were clothed with white, clean, fine linen, were following him on white horses. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will shepherd them with an iron staff. He himself is going to trample the winepress of the fierce anger of the Almighty God on his garment and on his thigh. This name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have sure hope. Please stand for the gospel. Before he ascends, Jesus promises to send the disciples power from heaven to carry out his mission. The gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24. He said to them, these are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, this is what is written, and so it must be. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. Look, I am sending you what my father promised, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. He led them out as far as the vicinity of Bethany. He lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he parted from them 
and was taken up into heaven. So they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They were continually in the temple courts, praising and blessing God. Amen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Lift high the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The end of the school year is a lot of things, and one of those things is saying goodbye. Students, classmates saying goodbye to each other, to those friends that they've been saying hi to more or less every day for the past 37 weeks, which at that age is a really, really long time. Students saying goodbye to teachers who have taught them, taught them history and math, who have read to them time and time again, who have greeted them in the morning and sent them on their way in the afternoon for the whole year, and goodbye. Teachers saying goodbye to what has become a temporary little family. To their classes that are now moving on to next year's classrooms after a year of becoming a family with all that implies, both the quarrels and the good times, the jokes, the inside gags, all those wonderful things and troubling things that come with family. But now the teachers have to say goodbye to their little families and the whole school saying goodbye to the eighth graders. This is it. You'll come back and visit, but it'll be different. It won't be the same. And so goodbye to eighth grade. The whole school wishes you well to farewell in your years ahead. 
The end of the year is a lot of things and it's a lot of goodbyes. Ascension sort of feels like goodbye too. Luke tells us that Jesus led the disciples out, and this is chapter 24, as far as the vicinity of Bethany, a few miles outside of Jerusalem. He lifted up his hands and blessed them, and while he was blessing them, he parted from them and was taken up into heaven. So they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. They were continually in the temple courts, praising and blessing God. Amen. That sure sounds like goodbye, but Jesus' ascension is just the opposite. Compare these two things, the end of the school year and the end of Jesus' time physically with his church, with his disciples. And note well the reactions of the people involved. End of the school year is sad and happy. The goodbyes make us sad, but the end of the school year makes us happy too. It's sad because you're saying goodbye to friends, at least for a while, maybe for longer. Goodbye to teachers. Goodbye to a building, a place that you've known, some of you, for many years. So it's sad. But it's also happy. Right? I mean, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand to say who's happy tonight. I mean, there's a lot of happy people here tonight, which makes me very happy too. But you're happy because you're going on trips, and you're going swimming, and you're doing all those things that you've been thinking about since January, maybe before, and so it's happy. Jesus' ascension is just happy. At the ascension, there is no sadness. Jesus has parted from his beloved disciples, but they are filled with joy and they go off praising the Lord. Why? Should they be at least a little bit sad? Why are they so joyful? Well, because Jesus has taught them that ascension means not having to say goodbye. For these three years that he's been with them, and now these past 40 days since Easter, the resurrection, he has been teaching them again and again, one last time and again and again, one last time, that ascension means not having to say goodbye. Because ascending to the right hand of his Father in heaven means that he is going to the place where he serves us, where he must serve us, where he goes to sit at his Father's right hand to rule all the nations for our good. He goes to sit at his Father's right hand to take dominion over the universe and all things that he himself has created by his holy word. He is also the one who gave us the ability of speech and now receives our prayers and petitions, big and small. Like when you say, have a great summer. That's kind of a prayer. And Jesus hears that too. And so there is Jesus at the right hand of the Father, exactly where he needs to be, so that he serves us best as he wills and desires because of his great love for you. And so now he is sending out his Holy Spirit, as we will see in 10 more days, commanding his disciples to stay in Jerusalem to receive this power, this word of truth that the Holy Spirit will bring to them, to the whole church, the whole church to the ends of the earth. So, all of this means, all of it, means that even the temporary sadness of our earthly goodbyes is just temporary. Goodbyes are all around us. You don't just have to be a school kid to know that. Saying goodbye to school friends and dedicated teachers is part of that, but so is saying goodbye to children who have grown up and are moving out of the house. There's happiness with that, but sadness as well. There's also the bittersweet happiness and sadness of saying goodbye to a parent at their deathbed. This Memorial Day weekend, we remember those comrades, some of you know personally, who gave their lives 
in service to their country and were separated from their families. And so there is the goodbye there. There are many goodbyes in this life. It isn't just stop with school. Our life here on earth is filled with goodbyes. But all these separations for us, dear Christian friends, while painful here on earth, are temporary. For some parents this week, their goodbyes to their school children were the last ones ever. Permanent. And so for Jesus' sake, teach your children the truth. For God's sake, teach your children about sin and evil that is in this world. Please, teach them. Teach them that this world is falling apart because of us and our sin. Take them to funerals and teach them why that funeral is taking place. Teach them the fear of the Lord and teach them the wisdom that only comes from there. And I'm not just talking to you if you have parents right now or children right now, but future parents as God wills it. Teach your children the great love that he has for the world, a world of sinners of which we are a part because we are sinners. Having learned that lesson well as we see our lives not going so well, filled with goodbyes. But teaching them also that we will have joy in this life, not because we are innocent, which is the lie that the world tries to give to itself when tragedy strikes. How foolish. Teach them the truth. Teach them that we are sinners and that our sin has been paid for by the blood of the Lamb. As the children just sang to us, the Lamb who is the Christ, the Son of the living God. For God's sakes, teach them that. Take them to church and take Jesus into your home and hear the promises that allow us to live in this dark world without fear that we do not need to be afraid of death because Jesus has died, suffered and died to wash away our sin. For God's sakes, teach them that, please, please. There are too many permanent goodbyes in this world, needlessly so. So teach your children, teach yourself, for Jesus' sake, the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, to be able to see that you are a light in this world because Jesus is the light of the world. In this dark world, he is the only light. And you bear this light wherever you go, both into school and into the world and into your homes and into your church. And that is a good thing. This is our great heritage that we have, a gift from the Lord. This, dear friends, is true wisdom. It is the wisdom that we have in the ascension of our Lord because Jesus ascended into heaven only for sinners, which means he ascended to heaven for you. And therefore, your goodbyes shall not last. Only Jesus knows. But for some this week, their last Tuesday morning goodbyes on their way to school were only temporary. Praise be to Christ. For Jesus' sake, these goodbyes shall pass. We will greet each other again because Jesus is ascended and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Please stand for the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as our rich and generous offerings are presented at the altar. Hi guys. Oh yeah, you guys too. <laughs> we made it. You guys have worked very hard. It's possible that today was the hardest day of school that you've had. I mean, I put you in charge of 13 kids in each of your teams today. This was probably the most difficult day of your school career. It only gets harder. But you're here. You know, I never really got to teach you guys and have you as a full class for a year. And I'm a little bummed about it but I will say that a month into the school year, being brand new here, I said to Mr. Mansky one day, I said, Mr. Mansky, you got a special class. And I, I said that. And you can ask him. He'll confirm it if, if he remembers. <laughs> but I did. I said, I can tell this class cares about each other. I can tell this class cares about being leaders at our school. I can tell the class cares about the little ones. I can tell that a month into it. And I think that held true. So here you are. You're no longer eighth graders. Well, maybe until you hold that, right? But it kind of makes me think about our theme for the year. And it's the class verse that you chose, and I think you're very wise to choose your theme because it's the thing that we've been talking about all year. From Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. That word hope, that means something a lot different in our Christian faith than it does to the rest of the world. The rest of the world, when you look at hope, is just a word of hope. You go, well, I hope I graduate. You know? It's an unsure thing in the world, right? 
But when God talks about hope in his word, it is certain, it is sure, it is finished. That's what hope means in Christ. And that hope is what he holds on to you with. He secures you, secures you like an anchor. So as you move on into the next stage of your time of grace on this earth, God wants you to hold on to his anchor, hold on to his hope, his certain hope of salvation. I don't know if you read the front cover letter of your yearbook. If you haven't, read it. There's a message in there for you eighth graders. We want you here. Don't be a stranger. We want to see you guys. We want to worship with you. These guys want to see you. So be here. Join us. So as you move on to that next stage, you're still here, worshiping your Lord and Savior with us. And now you receive the thing that you've been waiting for and you want me to stop talking. Your diplomas. Amara Balthazar. Stay for a picture over there, okay? Natalie Bartelt. Jaden Budzin. Faith Christensen. Isaac Grunwald. Austin Herbrand. Kiernan Judson. I told you there was a lot here for you. Seth Coleman. Congratulations, Seth. Jacob Krieger. Shane Lehman. Congratulations, Shane. Kiana Schmolt. Congratulations, Kiana. Carter Smet. Jason Trewin. Congratulations, Jason. Logan Jacinth. Congratulations, Logan. One more round of applause for our 2022 graduates.
In our special prayers this evening, prior to the Lord's Prayer, we'll pray for Dan Droman, whose father Gary died Tuesday at the age of 81. We pray for our school and all our graduates. And we pray for those enduring a devastating loss in Texas, especially for families, first responders, and those tasked with the hard work of burial and consolation. Please stand for prayer. Merciful Father, you give and you take away according to your wisdom. We give thanks for all the merits you gave to your servant, Gary Droman, during his time on earth, especially for calling him to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort his wife, Mary, and his son, Dan, and all who mourn his death with the true hope of resurrection for your son's sake. Merciful Father, you have directed our homes and congregation to feed your lambs. We thank you for establishing and sustaining our Lutheran school as our teachers teach our young ones what is good, true, and beautiful in this fallen and dark world, especially the hope that we have in your faithful son, Jesus Christ. Bless our staff, our students, and all our families this summer as they continue to be fed with your word at home and at church. Bless especially those students who have reached milestones in their lives. Bless those who have completed kindergarten, Levi, Titus, Stella, Milena, Owen, Connor, Calithia, Bradley, Zoe, Asher, Zacharias, Elena, Emily, Annika, and Braxton. Bless those who have completed eighth grade, Amara, Natalie, Jaden, Faith, Austin, Isaac, Logan, Kiernan, Seth, Jacob, Shane, Kiana, Carter, Jason, Megan, and Zephaniah. Bless those who have completed their senior year of high school. Alexa, Jason, Madison, Tyson, Emma, Jager, McKenna, Caitlin, Colin, Michaela, Abigail, Trista, Isabel, Isabella, Kylie, Andy, Ryan, and Matthew. Merciful Father, we come before you in sorrow. Be with all affected by this evil from this week. Comfort them in this time of mourning and darkness. The only abiding joy we have in this evil world is your death and resurrection for us. Let us cling to your faithful promise of new life in these times and teach them to our fourth graders and to all our children. As you promised, come back in your glory and bring this veil of the shadow of death to a just end so that all who trust in you may be gathered around your throne now and forever. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our final hymn.
warm welcome to all of you here this evening, families, friends, members, visitors. It's a joy to have you in God's house on this very special night. Families, please join us on June 2nd, a week from today, after the Thursday night service for our first of three family fellowships this summer. Parents of our under fours, our special cradle roll workshop is scheduled to begin Sunday, June 5th from 11 to noon. Sign up today for our July 12 Doc Spiders game. It's on the information station there. And also on the information station is a card box for Ann Stefan. So please join us in two weeks to give thanks for Ann's dedication to teaching our young people for these many, many years. And please give generously to the ammo can in the narthex next to the American flag this Memorial Day weekend. Principal Raditz. If I could steal just a few more moments, I don't want this day to end. It is the last day of school, so we're gonna stretch this out as long as we possibly can. But I have a lot of awards up here to give to a lot of great young people who, who have worked very, very hard for, for the GPA that they have achieved. And I think it's important for us to, to recognize them tonight. I do ask that you hold your applause until all of the students are up here and then, um, and then we'll applaud, otherwise it could take a long, long time, so. The first four individuals are receiving the President's Education Award for Outstanding Academic Excellence. What this means is that in, within their classroom, grades five, six, and seven, they had the highest GPA. So guys, in the back there, please come forward and receive your certificate, and please remain up here just for a short time. For the fifth grade room, the highest GPA was Chloe Boringer. In the sixth grade room, it was Phoebe Boringer. In the seventh grade room, Taylor Larage. And in the eighth grade room, Isaac Grunwald. Please give them a round of applause. All right, guys, you can head back. The next awards are now for all students in grades five, six, seven, and eight that were able to achieve a 3.5 GPA or higher. So these are the fifth graders, and there are a lot of them. So way to go, fifth graders. The first one is Chase Beekman. They forgot to hold their applause. Mary Boringer. Cameron Butson, Griffin Hines, Trevor Krieger, Tyler Krieger, Ian Laurence, Olivia Lau, Claire Riuda. Desmond Starks, Abel Welsing, Brianna Will,
and Jadalyn Zellner. Great job, guys. All right, you guys can head back. Thank you, guys. Go ahead. Now for the sixth grade classroom. Owen Donath. Oh, bummer. Okay. Kylie Herbrand. Ireland Stammen. Lily Strutz. Maya Tittle. And Kashtan Zivkovich. Great job, guys. All right, you guys can head back. Thank you. Here's our seventh grade room. Lindley Jarabic. Noah Strutz. And Isabel Will. Great job, guys. All right, you guys can head back. Thank you, guys. Good job. And our eighth graders. It shouldn't take them as long to get up here. Our first one is Faith Christensen. Good job, Faith. Logan Jacinth. Jacob Krieger. and Shane Lehman. Great job, guys. All right, you guys can have a seat. Do you have any more announcements, Pastor? All right, parents, please don't forget to pick up your report cards from your teachers if you'd like them to move on to the next grade. We'll see you in the narthex.